before we get start uh, before we get started i would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you who generously help us make this event come together to become a success especially raul uh, diamond and patron sponsors such as uh, bosch security safety system uh thank you to each and every one of you being here with us today and we are very pleased to express our welcome to Alexandru Natapratsu. I'm happy that I pronounced your name well. That is uh, good, he's, yeah. He's coming from uh, Bosch Security and Safety System, Product Marketing Manager of Video System for Southeast and Europe and the Adriatic. Um, his presentation will be about smart video solution going beyond security. Uh, Mr. Alexandru, uh, please, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Hadis, for the introduction. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome also from my side. Um, first of all, I trust that everyone is good and safe. I wish I had the chance to meet you in person, but uh, given the times we are crossing, I'm, I'm grateful to be able to meet you virtually as well. Uh, okay, so this being said, I think it is start to uh, go on with the presentation. I uh, also hope that you can hear me well, just for uh, yeah, a small confirmation will be, will be great. Is it the sound okay? Yes, sound is okay. Okay, sound is actually perfect. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So, okay, let's just start as mentioned with the presentation. And then I'd like to start with a message that can well play also a role of a conclusion. And this would be the future of security is data driven. The solutions of the future are those that really value the data and, and consider it to bring security and life safety and business intelligence to another level. It is a fact that security today means much more than creating a safe environment. The protection of people and, and, and property remain, of course, the utmost importance, but um, the Internet of Things and rising connectivity and other developments change the role of the security devices. The data collected by security devices should be easy used and translated into the relevant insights that help customers creating new value. This is why it is our basically our philosophy to innovate security and create new value. It means we help our customers to create a more secure world and uh, deliver them business insights beyond security. To better understand this philosophy of ours and then the future of the security industry, we have to look also at some market developments and uh, also to changing customer requirements. Uh, the fact is that security is no longer isolated. Security devices like access control systems or intrusion systems or management software, video security devices in general, are becoming more and more connected. Uh, today, security devices are, are becoming part of uh, an, an integral and vast digital connectivity infrastructure, which is known also under the name Internet of Things. According to, the, to some uh, uh, various researches, actually, by 2025, it is expected that more than 75 billion devices will be connected to the Internet. To, yeah, Internet of Things, it's, it's definitely a promising concept of the technology industry for the coming years, but this will impact also the role of the security industry. And what does it mean? This means that we really need to, need to take into the consideration the changing role of security within this era of Internet of Things. As said, devices are becoming more and more connected and also they are becoming sensors which provide valuable data that can be analyzed and used to create new business value. In our, in our view, in our Bosch view, security domains like access control or management software or video security and intrusion will merge into data-driven solutions. In this approach, the video security cameras will be the most versatile sensors 
their role basically would be to enable other things to extract and correctly interpret the data. And this would be the, uh, uh, to bring security and safety um, uh, and business intelligence to, to another level, to the next level. Uh, why? But, uh, you know, while connectivity and data collection are increasing, customer requirements and their pain points are also changing. We've seen also in the previous presentation several or similar aspects. So a key concern for customers and users in, in the Internet of Things era in, a, in this increasing connected world is the level of privacy and protection. As collected data is often, uh, if often, uh, it would often contains personally uh, information or sensitive data. Also, the protection of data in, in transit and when stored, it is critical. Customers need the highest level of data security. It's really an important point. Customers need also the latest technologies that ensure the capture of highest image quality. And this should be regardless of the object, object movement or, or a possible poor lighting condition or adverse situation. So security is becoming more, much more than keeping a safe and secure environment. Well, how we shape the future in all these uh, very complex contexts? We are. We decided. We have chosen to empower our customer and user to take advantage of the data uh, with leading solutions that we bring into the market, and and they will enable the customers to improve security and also to tackle business opportunities beyond security. And uh, one of such solution of ours is intelligent insight, and this is exactly designed for this scope because it is basically a new software solution of ours that enable us to use data in new ways. The use of data from intelligent video cameras with the goal of improving people's safety or security of the premises and then for going also beyond security for various businesses decisions has been at the core of our thinking for several years back already when we have introduced video analytics at the age directly in the camera. Now is the time for a dedicated solution in that respect, and this solution, as mentioned, it is called Intelligent Inside. As it is well known, Bush cameras have built-in video analytics with multiple functionalities, plenty of other useful information that, that are called generically metadata are created by the Bosch cameras, and this comes in addition to the video imaging itself. And uh, this is what we can see in this animation uh, video, and this is what this video is revealing. Intelligent Inside, as said, deals with specific metadata information uh, out of this metadata coming from the camera, such as crowd or counting and geolocation information from one or multiple cameras simultaneously. And the metadata is collected by this application and then it is aggregated and displayed using a series of uh, predefined intuitive widgets. We'll see later on what these widgets it's, uh, it, it's about. And this, as mentioned, it will be really available information in addition, in addition to the video stream itself. When uh, information is visualized like a widget, this can indicate, and this is also what you can see here in the slide. So these widgets can indicate either the current situation, so a series of icons in the live view mode, or uh, this uh, may be a historical development of a certain situation, and this should be in a quite intuitive way. Um, and the historical uh, evolution of some um, uh, events, let's say, can be uh, displayed in time periods uh, as convenient for the end user, like 10 minutes or 30 minutes, or maybe one hour or even more. Uh, we deal here with a series of icons and graphs, and each 
uh, widgets are displayed in a specific color. As you can see here, we can find colors like green or yellow or red, each one basically indicating either it's about a normal range of a certain situation or maybe abnormal, or when it's red, it could indicate the fact that it could be about a critical situation. In addition to this, and I'll develop it further in the next slides, this Intelligent Inside offers also a report functionality uh, section. Then it is good for a detailed post analysis. We will see uh, everything in the next slide, as mentioned. Then uh, the widgets I have we've seen in a previous slide what is called widgets in this Intelligent Inside application. These widgets can be grouped in a simple or easy to read. Uh, or let's say a group that is called dashboard. This is how a dashboard might look like. It is what we can see currently in the image. Dashboards can be freely customized by the, uh, by the end users, and this will allow end user to include any, only the widgets and information that they really need. Just to mention that Intelligent Insight allows building dashboard that can have up to 16 widgets. Uh, before going to check, uh, before going into the detail, uh, uh, in the use case details, basically, in all the use case covered by the Intelligent Insights, I would like to highlight a few other reasons that call, basically, for such an application. It is something that can be seen as a customer challenges today. Uh, as we have mentioned also previously, a lot of metadata is available from uh, our intelligent cameras uh, on a regular basis, but not all of this information is used, only a minimum part of it. Uh, what is more, if we have multiple cameras as part of the system, and this is basically usually the case, and if we look at the individual metadata of a single camera of a single camera only, we do not get the complete picture of the situation. This is where the necessity of consolidating data across multiple cameras in, in a clever system, so that to be able to display and to uh, visualize everything in a time context to create basically insights for the users. Then another reason. Uh, would be that many uh, times it is challenging to understand the critical situation by analyzing uh, only the video streams. Intelligent Insights solve this as well by means of a compiled or let's call it aggregated overview of the situation that allows the user to quickly see either the trend with the number of counted objects with a time period or, or, or the tendency of move, movement objects, uh, the formation of a crowd maybe, or the fee level of, uh, of an area. All these basically contribute in, in fastly evaluating the, the, the data generated by multiple cameras, providing a complete understanding of the situation and therefore, allows for quick and efficient reaction of the, of the operators. It is time now to explore the use case uh, with a uh, existing use case, basically with the intelligent inside application. One of it would be what is called crowd detection. This can serve situations that require uh, determining and, and displaying the current crowd level of a certain given area. When implementing crowd detection, uh, widgets. So when when defining the widgets, users can also set up or, or or define a certain reference level. For instance, in percentage, like like an abnormal or a critical crowd level in a given area. Once combined with one or multiple intelligent cameras with video analytics, then users will be informed instantly when this abnormal or critical level is reached to take informed decision. The applications for such functionality can be numerous, but an obvious example, which is also displayed here in the slide, could be the train plus station platforms or areas in front of escalators and elevators that uh, basically areas that frequently tend to attract crowds, but uh, don't uh, really demand the requirement of uh, exact people counting. Well, uh, 
for such situation, we have a different use case, and this is called occupancy counting. Occupancy counting is the right solution if exact counting is required to determine the occupancy level. Because this, it has the ability to register the exact number of objects or people within the field of view of one of or multiple camera, just to, to, to mention this, that it is not working with only one cam camera, but also with multiple cameras. And uh, if these cameras are covering the area of interest, then we can uh, easily can get the number of people, let's say within the field of view of the camera. The user can easily specify the capacity limits with the area by setting, for instance, the maximum number of, of objects, or if it is about person, maximum number of people that are allowed within a given time. Once this predefined capacity is reached, then users are informed instantly or, or uh, possible alerts or public announcements can be triggered, activating using, uh, for instance, the camera relay. By making use of the camera's built-in uh, camera trainer technology, if you if you if you remember, is this technology video analytics technology based on machine learning. So if we make use of this camera trainer technology, then occupancy counting can also be tailored or can be customized to meet specific customer requirements. For example, to count unoccupied parking spaces and and then to advise when. Uh, where spaces might when or where spaces might might, might be available if there are uh, if this is the case, and uh, an ideal application for this is parking lot uh, uh, without a ticketing system because this way we can we can assess on the um, let's say occupancy uh, counting and we can assess on the free or occupied parking spaces. Another use case covered by the intelligent inside, it is what is called area fill level. Uh, this uh, widget is used when the areas in, in, uh, of interest cannot be completely covered with cameras, but still the exact number of people or objects in the area uh, it, it is still needed to be determined. Uh, it monitors basically the capacity or fill level of an area to help customer to meet the legal or, or safety specific limitation. This can be also the case. Here, user can specify the abnormal or the critical occupancy rate of an area by uh, determining the maximum number of objects or people that are allowed to be in the area within a given time. Uh, similar with the other use cases, the user will then be informed immediately uh, via a change of a color in the widget that the maximum number in the area has been reached. Uh, this use case can also activate a trigger, an external device when a threshold is reached. And um, uh, this one, area fill level and occupancy county for this reason that allows us to uh, be able to activate a trigger when a certain area has been reached. It's, it's an important, let's say, uh, support for us, for instance, when uh, uh, trying to fight uh, with these COVID uh, specific situations, uh, especially in locations that typically attract larger crowds like public buildings or office buildings or shops or other open areas. It was quite straightforward. User specifies a maximum occupancy rate of an area within a given time. And then <clears throat> when that certain uh, or a particular threshold is reached, an external device can, can be triggered via what is called RESTful API interface. Uh, the most convenient possibility is to activate, for instance, a relay of, uh, of uh, one of our cameras. Um, and this relay can, can, for instance, control or a traffic light signal to indicate if the people should enter or not. Uh, almost all our cameras have a built-in relay on board, but also other connected devices benefiting uh, of, of uh, what I mentioned earlier, what is called RESTful API interface can be triggered as well. And I have in mind uh, the Adam uh, input-output units from Advantech, but can be also something similar devices. Okay, then let's move forward for another use case covered by the intelligent insight. It is so-called people counting. 
the people counting function allows for simple but accurate counting of people who cross a preset a virtual line uh, using one or multiple cameras. This basically has the ability to visualize, to visualize two counters, as you can see here in the slide. And this will be part as one and the same fidget. That, therefore, we are able to reflect the number of people counted from both directions simultaneously, for instance, entrance and exit. Uh, typical application for these people counter are entrances to buildings, uh, allowing users to see immediately if there is a sudden or maybe unusual increased flow of people, which could be an indication for yeah, a possible security issue. Then one last case covered by intelligent inside, but also very important, it is what is called object positioning. For applica applications, for instance, such as perimeter security, providing users with uh, an overview of all objects that are moving in a certain area uh, at all time, this use case is it's basically the perfect case for covering these requirements. Uh, with this object positioning widget, a uh, user can get a real-time overview of all objects that are moving along the perimeter. This functionality is based on, 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 uh, on geoposition uh, localization, which is present in our camera, and this GPS position is taken uh, by the intelligent uh, inside application, and then the information are like, like uh, icons, but not real uh, video streaming, exploded into a map and are smartly classified in the form of icons, as I mentioned, and so that the user can see uh, it's about, either it's about, let's say, persons or cars or maybe trucks or bikes approaching or moving away a certain premises. And this way, uh, this user, use case basically uh, provides a clear overview to identify potential security risks without revealing person details. And this conforms very much to the strictest pro privacy protocols. And then uh, because GDPR and privacy, it is strongly supported by, by, by Bosch, because Bosch has a, has a uh, uh, total dedication to data and uh, personal privacy. In addition to the widgets and dashboards that we've seen uh, in the previous slides, uh, also uh, a report and export functionality for the detailed post analysis is available with this intelligent side. So collected counters and crowd density data is stored for maximum 31 days in the internal database of the application. Uh, for later analysis and, expo uh, and export of the collected data, uh, we have the chance to export it in a, in a CSV format, and this way we'll be able to uh, uh, check the situation also for longer periods than the one which is uh, held uh, in, in our uh, database. Okay, I think it's time now to uh, touch also a very important topic related to this uh, intelligent inside. It is a topic uh, revealing or talking about data security. Uh, data security and, and, and privacy, as we've seen uh, before, have always been a key part of both security solution. So it is there also with intelligent inside application. Uh, intelligent Insight uses only anonymous data from cameras, ensuring people's privacy is protected at all times from screen, from the screen basically, from the scene to the screen. Uh, all communication between the cameras and Intelligent Insight web interface is also secured via T, what is called TLS 1, 2, 3. Uh, and, um, this, this allows the encryption of the, of the transmitted data uh, to the highest and assure the highest security level. And this is present also on the camera level, on the camera connection, but also when, when trying to visual, visualize dashboard with intelligent insight, we have this encryption over there. Uh, that was basically the uh, last part on the intelligent insight. Uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for me 
to introduce a totally new camera platform of Bosch, and this is called Intiox, with a payoff title Unlimited Stars here, and you'll see why is this title assigned to this camera. As already touched before, today's security solutions have far more potential than simply creating a safe and secure environment. Security devices are actually sensors, as already mentioned. They are able to provide valuable data that can be analyzed and used in the new beneficial ways. Uh, in order to achieve this in the future, we require a more open platform that combines built-in artificial intelligence, the right levels of performance, uh, and also a more commonly used operating system, because this will give us the ability to freely add software apps afterwards without a boundary, and to add the software apps directly into the camera. So. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first fully open camera platform uh, that will enable full freedom for new development. So welcome to the Intiox. And this is the way we see the Intiox camera platform. So, the philosophy with the Intiox car, uh, camera platform, therefore, it's uh, a fully open camera platform. And uh, the philosophy is to enable the marketplace to independently imagine. And this would be the, uh, based on the customer or the market needs. And then to create, and this will be the developer's job, and further to deploy. Uh, customer specific solutions consisting of specific application. And this is basically the integrated job. The future growth of our industry will, will be definitely accelerated if, if developers or system integrators and partners and other market players can uh, independently imagine and create and deploy customer specific solutions consisting basically of application and then in software or maybe uh, services. Uh, the marketplace uh, I have mentioned, it, which is obviously a digital marketplace, it is provided by an entity called SNST, which is security and safety things. Uh, SNST basically provides the entire IoT infrastructure consisting, uh, consisting of an application store, uh, often web portal for uh, app developers, and then uh, the means by uh, managing the devices, the devices like uh, Intox cameras by Bosch. Uh, so it will facilitate a virtual meeting between uh, the open camera uh, hardware producers like Intox from Bosch, between the app developers, and also between the system integrators or the end user. It will bring together the security industry. And that's why we believe that the introduction of a new open platform is set to revolutionize the security and safety industry. And what is more, uh, everything is done, uh, uh, let's say, on the customer benefits and customers and end users. This will be facilitating new developments that are Let's, let's call it beyond the scope of any single company because no any single company in the world can tackle all the security challenges of today. But bringing together all the main players in the market, then we have higher chances to find the best 
possible application to serve a specific a specific type a specific type let's say of a, of installation with a specific requirements uh, then let's just dip further in these uh, three pillars imaging uh, create and deploy the imaging this is why uh, when our customer will purchase an Intox unit, they will not get a simple capturing imaging device. They will get, in fact, an intelligent sensor that will be able to collect and interpret video and data and then to provide insights or relevant information according to their needs. Having such a device, customers alone to define what their device will be and how it will work for them. They may imagine, for instance, to use the sensor, the camera, the sensor perhaps as an access control device based on the face recognition or based on the license plate identification, or they can decide to use the camera as a fire detector, enabling detection of fire before yeah, it spreads thanks to the built-in artificial intelligence or maybe they can decide to use the camera as an intrusion detector, making use of the video data, making use and making use of the interpretation of the data. So all these will be on the customer hands. And then once the customers imagine their solution, we will help the customer to create it with our video sensor devices based on the fully open platform, which is Indiox. Uh, app developers have a full freedom to develop new software solution, but they can make use also of the time of what comes by default with the camera, because uh, video analytics, it is there with the camera. Video, the existing video analytics will be further extended and a for sure additional value uh, will be aided by means of the software. Also, the camera will consist like any other uh, uh, cameras in our portfolio uh, will, concede, uh, will consider the higher will include the highest data security, security by design. So an easy tailoring or, or, or customization in multiple ways, it will be possible within the OX because this is enabled basically by the specific of the platform behind the camera. And then once new solutions are imaging and created, we need to support our customer to deploy their solution into the camera. And um, um, by this, we offer a series of, of uh, services. First, and, and not only, first of all, we offer the a complete camera portfolio, which is the Intiox uh, portfolio. Then next to it we offer uh, what is called remote portal and this it is the portal that comes into the play it's an important safe and security bosch cloud infrastructure additionally in addition to in addition to this we have also this snst iot platform that will enable uh, deploying camera uh, application into the camera uh, Bosch remote portal that I have introduced earlier, it is actually the carrier that offers cameras connectivity to this SNST IoT platform for a full deployment of the application of the apps. And once connected to the security and safety things, IoT infrastructure cameras uh, or system integrators can easily purchase the desired third party application. And then further, they can continue with the installation and the management of the application within the cameras. And then can be various applications developed by the various uh, app developers out there in the, in the world. Uh, application like li LPR, license plate recognition on the edge, or face recognition, or object classification, or person anonymizer. So all sort of application can be imagined and then upload it into the camera uh, and all this to add value and to be able to take a customized application from our customers. Just a few additional words on Intiox camera portfolio before, let's say, uh, completing this topic. Uh, the Intiox portfolio will consist of two PTZ models and two fixed units. The PTZ models are already here, while the fixed units, fixed cameras, will be available uh, close to the end of the year. 
from the resolution point of view, uh, the MIG, the PTZ MIG camera will have 1080p and 4K. The OutStorm will have 1080p resolution, while all fixed units will be equipped with 4K sensors. Uh, all of them offer a high level of built-in video analytics. So whatever we know from the video analytic perspective will be here, will be into the camera, and this will be for sure a major differentiator comparing with other open camera platforms because everybody who wants to develop an application can start it from here, can start from the existing intelligence in our cameras. Uh, security by design, it is there. Since they are open now, uh, open platform now, uh, and open for third-party software, uh, Intel's cameras offer a standboxing concept for the secure installation and execution of this third-party uh, application. And this will be without compromising the functionality of the camera, because as we know, standboxes is a software management strategy that isolates application from critical system resources and, and, and other programs into the camera. So uh, everything that one would expect from Bosch solution, including the highest level of intelligence, the security performance, the simplicity, and of course, quality are also present with Intiox cameras. And in addition, being an open camera platform, new developments that can, be, can, can go beyond the scope of any single company today would be possible. This is why the unlimited starts here. It is uh, chosen as a payoff name next to the Intiox platform. And that was basically, in nutshell, the philosophy of Intiox cameras in our portfolio. Now it's time to move to another section, actually to the last section of the presentation of today. Uh, and uh, this will be the management software because as the information from all the sensors we've seen so far uh, must be managed in and, and presented in a, a structured way toward the security operators or toward the end users, then the industry needs also to uh, management solutions. And uh, this is the point where I'll enter BVMS, which is, uh, stands for Bosch Video Management System. Uh, so BVMS application will be entered into the play right now. Uh, actually, the BVMS vision it is to empower the operators to prevent, detect, and solve security and safety related incidents by visualizing the right information at the right time. This is because BVMS, in fact, represents a truly security integration platform across multiple security subsystems, and all these subsystems are seen sensors. These sensors can include Bosch products, for example, video analytics or access control or intrusion systems, but also other products that are connected to uh, what we call BVMS SDK, such as license plate recognition or personal identification, which is, in fact, facial recognition application. Well, BVMS consolidates the information from all the sensors into its alarm management mechanism. Uh, priorities then can be assigned, additional information can be visualized, and the, the relationship to video can be uh, perfectly configured to validate the input from all the sensors. For specific scenarios, we have customized BVMS user interface to make it even easier for the operator to understand what is going on? In addition, with the latest BVMS, which is BVMS 10.1, we've also enabled BVMS to visualize the intelligent inside widgets. It is exactly those widgets we've seen at the beginning of the presentation. And this way, uh, we can provide additional information into the BVMS additional to the video streaming, basically, that help the operator to further understand the security situation. It is everything to enable uh, the operators to visualize the right information at the right time. It is very important because the right information at the right time, we, we, with, uh, let's say, having all the necessary insights, it is basically understanding all of the security risks. 
And based on this, various plans can be put in place for mitigating those risks. It's very important for us to understand the risks. This means to assess if an incident can potentially be prevented, if the incidents materialize, uh, how people and then uh, how assets can be protected and how the organizations respond to the incidents. Finally, we simply want to track and document the incident so that we can solve the underlying case or the situation. And this is what BVMS generously supports and allows the security operators to understand the full chain, starting with the detection phase and puts him in the right position, basically, how should I say, it, it empowers the use the, the operators to offer the right solution to any incident. And this is the philosophy of, of BVMS. Uh, I, uh, if we look into the deployment possibility of BVMS, BVMS can, can be uh, applied for any smallest possible application. And it is really a scalable solution that grows with your security requirements. We can start with BVMS View or with BVMS Lite for only let's say a couple of tens of cameras, but then later on we upgrade the system to a higher, we can upgrade the system to, let's say, to, uh, uh, to a superior version, like uh, uh, our needs will increase. Uh, what is very important, we can, we can cover, we can reach uh, the system having a, a really impressive size, but from BVMS viewer to the light or to the plus or to the professional, or also even to the enterprise environment, uh, everything can be easily upgraded while keeping the same software package with the same look and feel so that no further operating training would be required when switching from one version to the other. I'd like to continue with just a couple of highlights of the latest BVMS uh, version. I mentioned already it's about BVMS 10.1. I start with uh, personal identification in future where the number of cameras for facial recognition has been uh, increased to 200 starting with this BVMS 10.1. Uh, personal identification, what is this? I have uh, associated this with facial, facial recognition uh, functionality because uh, it, it is exactly a facial recognition uh, functionality which is seamlessly integrated into the BVMS. This facial recognition is really an automated process of identifying a person by his or by her face. It detects, it captures and analyzes facial patterns with the objective to find uh, a, a perfect match in, in, in a database of known person. If a match is detected and reported by the system, the security operators uh, can receive this information as an alarm notification. So yes, from BVMS 10 on one onwards, the amount of cameras which can be added to the personal identification device, so cameras working with this facial, rec facial recognition functionality was extended to 200. Initially, it, it used to be eight, so it is an increase from eight as it used to be now uh, with the previous version up to 200 cameras per system, a BVMS system. The enrollment can be simply done, the enrollment basically of the suspects of the person that needs to be identified can be done by dragging the photos from, uh, from Explorer highly uh, high priority of alarms of person um, uh, can be assigned. And then once uh, this assignment has been done based on the priority, uh, uh, the, the system will react in a certain way. For instance, uh, when it's about a critical announcement, so alarms uh, or uh, events with a high priority, then the, the, crit the suspects list will pop up automatically for the medium priority alarm for personal enrolling in, in the monitoring suspect leads, uh, this, uh, let's say, triggers must be manually accepted by the operator. We have all the possibilities of customizing and managing, managing the alarms like we have with any other uh, device uh, as uh, working as part of the BVMS system. Then another 
uh, newly added feature with BVMS 10.1 is license plate recognition functionality. And I'd like to, to say a few words about this. Uh, this time, our strategy was to partner with a well-established license plate recognition provider in the market, and this would be the Italian company Tatile. This new solution with Tatile cameras comes basically in addition to several other existing software-based solutions that uh, can be integrated as well into the BVMS, uh, such as Foresight or ISS or uh, Neurosoft or, or PlateSmart and, and uh, some other as well. What would be different between the two partnerships it is that Tatile offers automatic number plate recognition cameras that extract the number plate from the image on the camera itself. So everything gets done in the camera and then it is sent uh, as a result of the BVMS. And this reduces the complexity of the installation and makes it easier also to be maintained. Uh, by the other hand, the above-mentioned software-based solution uh, do the processing of LPRs on their own and uh, use the integration with the peer, uh, sometimes, let's say, to be more complex, maybe, at least from the configuration perspective. Uh, the, the integration uh, from BVMS 10.1 onwards between Tatila and, uh, and BVMS covers basically two use cases, and I would like to shortly uh, mention them over here. It is what is called forensic search, and uh, it is basically based on this. We can find all the detection of a detected number plate, the camera name, and then the location, give an indication on where. Uh, this number has been detected, and also the alarming part it is covered and is present with this integration. Uh, we can get operators can get notification if no number plate is detected in real time from one or multiple cameras. If we, for instance, set uh, what is called a blacklist, then we can easily implement this blacklist uh, and edit this blacklist uh, uh, in BVMS, and then we can load this blacklist like. Uh, text file, let's say, in the image pane and uh, send it uh, uh, distributed to the Tatile cameras uh, using this FTP mechanism. Uh, what else has been uh, brought as a novelty with the BVMS 10.1? An important improvement have been brought uh, regarding the multi-location management. Uh, so, it is about an important optimization in the licensing scheme uh, that should increase the usage of enterprise systems and should support better multi-location and with the lower cost, actually, the multi-location installations. Uh, the first optimization would add the capability to add up to 20 subsystems to BVMS Plus and Divor IP all in one 7,000 series. So if we have a BVMS Plus or a DVOR IP unit uh, installed already in the field, uh, this can play the role of enterprise servers. And uh, this can receive up to 20 subsystems that can be in different location. Uh, so these subsystems can be BVMS light based systems or B BVMS Plus or the other DVOR IP uh, based uh, um, Appliances. Second, we have included the capability to add subsystem to BVMS Professional out of the box. It means that enterprise base package or, or, or the professional to enterprise upgrade package is not needed anymore. So simply having a BVMS Professional will allow adding uh, um, a series of other subsystems, up to 100 subsystems uh, easily to it without any let's say, uh, other considerants. And this subsystem can be uh, BVMS Professionals or BVMS Lite or BVMS Plus or either DVR IP all-in-one units. So that was, let's say, in the nutshell, the main novelty bro brought with BVMS 10.1. And then very shortly for the last part of the presentation, I would like to uh, highlight one of the most important benefits of a BVMS. It's a real core value in this, uh, 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 for this application, and this will be system reliability. 
because every single uh, installation basically regardless is high security like airport or train station or power plants or some other even smaller one uh, will require reliability of the system uh, to the highest level. It's basically the number one concern of the end user. The unavailability of a system, it is many times uh, synonym with low time operation on, on, on a particular premises with loss of money and customer side and also loss of trust on the system integrator sides. Uh, yeah, and not to mention the additional cost and some other aspects. Therefore, questions like, I don't know, what happens, for instance, when a certain component of the system fails? Will the operators be able to access still live images or to control certain cameras uh, or to access recording the, uh, video? So they are very common and well justified, actually, uh, on our customer sides. Uh, well, BVMS, by using kind of unique built-in resilience concept will always offer the required functionality to the operator out of the box. It is something that doesn't need investments in failover equipment. What you see here, basically, it's a, the typical architecture of the BVMS with the, with the BVMS components. Uh, we distinguish, for instance, the management server, the log every action, and then and, and, uh, manage settings into the system. We distinguish video recording manager that acts that as a traffic cop for all cameras and um, uh, knows exactly where the data is stored. So this would not be a gateway between the cameras and storage. Uh, video uh, from the camera are streamed directly to the storage or to the operating client. And then, of course, we can uh, we can have cameras in the system that can be up to 2,000 with one single server, and then the, the storage part that can be also considered in a mirror uh, approach in order to increase the reliability. So all these components basically are cooperating each other under the BVMS system. Well, but what is happening when, when one of uh, other CIS components, uh, uh, critical components are, are failing? What, what is happening in a, in a case of a disaster scenario? Well, BVMS will still be up and running uh, in various situations because, for instance, if video recording manager fails, then the cameras record independently. It, as, as, as we've seen before, VRM is not a gateway. You just sign a map with a storage block to the camera and then stands back and the camera streams direct to the iSCSI unit. What is happening, for instance, if uh, primary storage fails, then by design, we can consider a secondary storage and then the secondary storage will start over. Uh, but what if primary and secondary fail, then we can design a, a mirror location. Mirror recording uh, uh, can, can still be available. But at, what if the network is completely down? And then uh, we have no any means, no any communication from the camera to the central storage. Of course, we can consider an SD card inside the camera and then still save the recording. Uh, but uh, then, uh, what if the management server fails? Well, with BVMS, the core function st are still available from the operator client. So functions like, like live video or PTZ control uh, are still there. So the operator client that are still able to get to the camera, they can still see what is happening over there. Of course, when the management server is down, we uh, lose the supervision part. So all the related alarms from the camera, either it's about video analytics or some other alarms are not reported at all, but at least we still are able to see live images and we still are able to control the eventual possible PTZ units. Again, it is one of the most reliable deployments in the market with what is called the built-in resilience concept, the resilience concept by design. And if more resilience would be needed, then BVMS follows for integration with third-party software for extended resilience services. And this would be uh, involving like, uh, like Strauss VMware or Microsoft Hyper-V or uh, other similar solution. And then basically, 
uh, brought me to the end of the presentation. And now it is, uh, the session is open basically for your question. And then it's time to check the chat and to see if there are questions from you. Apparently there is nothing in the chat, but you can, you can try asking question right now. Who is the bravest from the audience? I hope that I, I, I can still be heard. Okay, then if there are no questions, then uh, please free to reach out to us and please free to ask questions or please free to book the meetings with us during this uh, um, days of the event. And then uh, we'll be there for uh, taking your questions or concerns or comments and then to discuss uh, upon request. So, all uh, this be being said, and thank you very much for being with us. And uh, yeah, what is more important, stay safe, and then see you next time. Thank you once again.